What's going on everybody? Perry here from LiveX bringing you another unboxing. But the fun thing about this unboxing, it's also a first look demo. Oh yeah. All right. I'm not going to dance because that's just going to get weird and then people are going to say things and Okay. <laughs> so today we have the light panels uh, Apollo Bridge DMX wireless device. Uh, super cool, super handy too, especially for those that are are uh, grips and uh, lighting directors and lighting designers, and you got lights all the way over there, and your computer or your iPad or your laptop are all the way over here, and you're kind of just like all over the place. Really, really cool device. So let's just dig right on into taking a look, and then with the magic of editing, we will transition into a demo. So first, let's take a look at this. Really neat, really nice, uh, good metal. Um, it you know it's it's lightweight, but you know that it's it's good quality just by the way that it feels. So as you can clearly tell on here, we have uh, three antennas. We have this back one is it's labeled CRMX, and then on the front they're not labeled. So this essentially your antennas are are to help. Uh, connect to your wireless modules. Speaking of wireless modules, not pictured on said table. The reason why is because they're in our lights. So sold separately from the Apollo Bridge, you will, um, you can acquire or will have to acquire um, wireless modules that go into your light panel Gemini's and your light panel Astra's. The light panel Astra's are, are uh, a yay big device that are essentially what you're doing is you're removing the entire wired DMX portion of the light on the back it slides out like a battery and then you slide in the wireless one which essentially looks almost exactly the same with one difference it has an antenna on it as for the gemini's there is a almost like a thumb drive usb thumb drive uh device with an antenna on the end you insert it into the bottom of the light good however the main thing about doing that is, and again, we'll get into this more into the demo, you need to make sure you change the settings on your lights to go from wired DMX to wireless DMX. That's very, very important because otherwise this baby won't work. So taking a look more so at the front and more so at the device, we have a couple of indicator lights right here and then you have your um, scan button. So essentially this, this button right here, right above my finger, this finger, um, is sort of like your, your Bluetooth pairing button uh, when you are trying to pair like a Bluetooth speaker. It's essentially searching on your local network because that's what gets plugged into here on the other side, which I'll flip around in just a moment. Um, it's essentially looking for all of those wireless modules that will work with the Apollo Bridge. So as promised, zoop, right on the other side here, we have our LAN, a WAN, a USB plug for data, a DMX IO wired just in case we needed to go into that power via USB-C and again another antenna in the box so again it is opened just because we have used it um, you it comes with a USB-C wire a power brick and your international plugs as well as your not international which we will be using today so I'm going to pull that out close this up and put that over here so really really neat and so with this with the small amount of playing around before we do our demo um, that we've gotten to try with this it's actually really neat you can like I was saying earlier you can literally have your light plugged into this uh, not even plugged into just powered on with this wireless module in it all the way over there you could be sitting all the way over there, just connected to the to your local network, and you can be messing around with your light. Isn't that neat? So you could be on the cherry picker on the on on top of a 12 foot ladder, and instead of having to go up and down and up and down, bring an iPad. I have an iPad sitting over there waiting for me to use. Boop 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 boop. That's me plugging things into the iPad, and my lights will change. So enough actually talking about it. Let's do a little bit of editing magic. That's the sign for editing magic to transition into a demo. So if you take a look at what we got on the table, we have this, the, the unit itself, we have the Apollo bridge 
and then next to it we have the wireless module for the Astra, and then even right next to that we have the wireless module for the Gemini. So these just get in, uh, these two, this is essentially almost like a USB, it just gets plugged in right into the bottom. This, you have to remove the wired module, essentially the, the wired insert for DMX from the back of the Astra, and then put, slide this in in its place, and then this is just the antenna that gets screwed in right there. Um, and then you just take the wired module and you put it to the side. This is just an add-on to the Gemini itself. And then as we said before, the blue wire, which goes to our local network, and then the black wire is just our power. We go into a Furman right underneath the table. So essentially the box looks for these wireless modules that we have in the back of the lights, finds it, syncs up with them, and then we're done. Welcome back, everybody. For you, it's probably been half a second. For me, it's been about 24 hours because I needed to make sure that all of this was working. Uh, so you might be thinking, Perry, how did you get over there from over there? TV magic. Anyway, so I'm not gonna ramble too much because I wanna get right into this. So if we come to the middle of the table, we have this beautiful, fancy schmancy Apollo bridge. So this is essentially, so this blue wire back here, right? right here, okay? That's going into our network, our local network. That black wire is the power. But essentially these antennas are working with the wireless modules that we have input into the Astra and the Gemini. And we are now able to control our lights via the app on this iPad that I have in front of me. So it did lock, so I do have to unlock it. There we go. So this is the project that I've created. If we go back one page, you can see that this is, so right now we only have the one project, which is right here. I know it's a, a touch dark, just that's because the, the, the screen is black. Um, but once we get into it, the colors will explode. So this is our project for today. We're gonna go into here and we're gonna, we have our Astro light, and we have our Gemini light. So the cool thing about this is we're gonna be able to demonstrate how we can wirelessly DMX these two lights from here without being at our lighting, computer lighting console. So we, Sally and I built this fancy schmancy box that you can see now. You see me here, but you also see my hands here. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Good job, Sally. Sally did a great job on that box. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive right into it. So we're gonna go into this Gemini light here and I'm gonna click these little uh, uh, fader looking buttons, uh, button and we're gonna come to this gorgeous layout. So you have your full color wheel. You can pick any color you want. You can choose your, your to plus or minus your green. You can change your color temperature and your intensity. But why am I just talking about it? Why not just do it? So I'm gonna, so, so I right now have the little dot here set to red and the saturation set to zero. So that's why we have this white light. But if I go like this, so you can either set the saturation from here or you can drag upwards on this little saturation button. I'm gonna click it right in the middle and I'm gonna drag upwards. So again, on camera, it's a little hard to see, but you can see all on the out, outer rim here, the whole light turned red. And then if I wanted to, I can make it purple I can go to blue and I can go all the way around, live changing the color to whatever I want. So why not, why not make it blue? Let's make it this nice blue color. And you can even see it on my hair. See it on my hair? They're really, really neat. And then, so if I go back to white, right? Let's make this zero saturation. I can change the temperature from warm. See how tan I get to how ghostly I get. Isn't that cool? So let's put this back to right around, I think it was around here-ish, give or take. And then something even cooler, if I, if I made this, if let's bring the saturation back up all the way and make this like a fuchsia, right? If I can, if I can get the, I can't get the button. I'm just gonna tap. Oh, so that's a th another thing. You can just tap where you want. So I was trying to drag it, but you can just tap. So I'm gonna go into, so I like this color. So I'm gonna come to swatches and I'm gonna do, and I have this custom here. So if I come back to color wheel, I believe right down here in the bottom left, there's this save swatch button. Click, I can name it P1. 
pink just because it's easier to type than fuchsia because I'm sure I'll spell it wrong. And if I come, and then if I wanted, if I made this white, if I come all the way back down and I go to swatches, here's my pink. Oh, I did spell fuchsia. I have two different fuchsias. And I go click that, light automatically changes. If I click this shade, it changes fractionally because these are very, very close. Um, but I could also come into these legacy gels and if there was a color that I liked in here, say King Falls Lavender. I can favorite this, it comes into my favorites, and then I can just tap and it changes color. Isn't that awesome? And then you could also do a little, you have a, if you come into the manual, you have a little bit more tinkering of, of your, your primary colors here, white, um, more of your color temperature and your green to magenta, as well as um, being able to control the mode that you're in, as well as the DMX fan, which is really, really neat. So let's come back over to the swatches and just go to this, so this is, this is really, uh, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, cool in uh, color. Um, so, oh, and here's another thing to note. My favorite swatches also pop up here for easy access. So if I like this lilac, this Midnight Maya, Tokyo Blue, and then I come back to Color Wheel, all of those that I am selecting and favoriting are popping up right here. So that's how the Gemini works. Now the, the reason why we have all of this color wheel and everything like that here on the Gemini is because the Gemini has RGB, has red, green, blue. But if I click save here, it's gonna close, and I can come into the Astra, and the Astra uh, is a bi-color light. So if I wanted to, what I can do is I can just change the temperature. So I can literally come into this app and I can just go like this. So it might be a little hard to see because there is diffusion on there. As I'm sure you can see, there's, there's, a, there's a diffuser on there. Um, so it is a little hard to see, but if, you re if we really wanted to take a look at, at how, how we can control this, I can come into the Gemini and I'm actually just gonna, so I'm gonna get dark. Not super dark, but I can, oh, so, so that's me demonstrating the intensity. So I just turn the intensity off. I'm gonna click save, I'm gonna come into Astra and I can just control how bright, see how bright I can get it? All from the app. And I can change the temperature right here. So that's really, really cool. And then you see, see how in the diffuser you can see the, the color changing? The temperature, rather. Isn't that awesome? So let's bring this back to about here. Click Save. So you have to make sure you click Save, because if you don't click Save and you just go Exit, it's going to revert back to what you had last saved to. So let's bring this back on just a little, and why don't we get really crazy and make it blue? Just because LiveX, we like blue here. Um, so that's how you can do that. But how to add more lights is all through this setup. So all of this is our DMX mapping here. So our Gemini is mapped to 316. Our Astra is mapped to 1 on our DMX map. But if I wanted to uh, just demonstrate, say we have um, at 99, we have another one. I can click 99, or what I can do is I can come into library. I can find the light. So say it's another Astra bicolor. I can select that and click patch. I can give it a name. So the name is specifically for us. The unique ID, the unique light ID also just for us. And then the DMX start address is actually the what you can find on the light. So on the light, in the, in the DMX network, each light has its specific start address. So that's what you would find in the light. So speaking of actually menus in the light, um, I'm not going to get too in-depth into it, but essentially you have to make sure that you have wired mode off, wireless mode on, and then take note of your DMX start address and take note of, obviously, the type of light. So we have our Gemini set to 16-bit. You wanna make sure that when you go to into the app, so like, let's, let's close out this tab and let's go to our Gemini uh, version one DMX. We are using the RGBAW six, uh, I'm sorry, RGBW mode 16-bit, which is a DMX size of 14. So if I click that and then I click patch, that's all my settings, and it automatically knows because it's a DMX size of 14. If I close this out, and like say we just we just added um, the this one, the one that we've been using, it automatically goes from 316 to 329. So that's that's the the app automatically knows by the light 
how many DMX uh, um, um, addresses it's going to need, which is really, really cool. So the app is very, very smart. I'm just going to exit out of the project just for the moment, just to show you back this. And then to create a project, you literally click Create Project. I'm going to create it, te just make it test. Click Done. Click Create. And now I have another test, and I can add as many lights as I want. So those went off because I went into a new project. But if I exit this project, and I come back into Demo, they go right back to where you last saved, which is really, really cool, really neat. Um, I can go on about this app for, for a long time, and, and they did a really, really nice job. And the fact that we can just like, and oh, so really cool thing. I'm going to back out of this really quick. So if I wanted to select this and select this, I can click this clear button down at the bottom and say, hey, clear all my settings. Are you sure you would like to clear uh, scratched values for selected lights? I can click, I'm not going to for the moment, but I can just click clear, it'll turn off all the lights, it'll zero them out pretty much, and that'd be that. If I click this little thing here though, so because I'm using an Asher and a Gemini, it's not gonna let me do the colors because I have two lights selected. What I can do though is I can just change the brightness of both at the same time. I can turn them all the way off if I really wanted. Isn't that neat? So I'm gonna bring it back up just a little. That's the Apollo Bridge app, folks. Isn't that awesome? This is, this is a really, really cool app, and it's going to be, su as I said earlier, it's going to be super, super handy for, for those that are lighting directors and lighting designers that are in the grid and just need to have something to hold on to, like, and change this and that and the other thing. If you have all of your, wire all of your lights on the, on the wireless dongles because you don't have Ethernet to get there and you have the bridge and one shorty Ethernet, plug that into to your network, that's it. Get your, get your uh, um, modules in, sync them all up, and that's that. So I think for this first look of the Apollo Bridge, I think we can call it there. You know to look for that lovely background for unboxings. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click the bell for every new video that we post. A notification comes your way. And then make sure you like, follow, and subscribe on any other social media site. LiveX Production. That's going to do it for this one, though. We'll see you next time.